today on the 700 Club Canada. Jackie passed out, and the doctor called a code blue. Gabriel and Baby Dawson were rushed from the room as the code blue team went to work. I just wanted somebody to come and grab me <laughs> and tell me it's going to be OK. I was preparing myself for the worst. I did not want to be a single dad. Jackie's so fun, and she's my best friend. So it'd be like losing, you know, a part of me. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Lori Hartshorn. And I'm Brian Warren. Thank you for joining us today. Let me ask you a question. What keeps you up at night? Definitely caffeine if taken afternoon. Mm -hmm. I can't have any caffeine past, you know, the high noon hour. That's for sure. You know, email texts, texts, and just looking at uh, <laughs> my schedule, I could actually lose a lot of, of valuable sleep yeah. if I do that right before I get ready to go yeah. to bed. And there's a lot of research in this study that says don't do that, Brian. Oh, I know. Right? I know. I know. No reading of the email. No, I know. Stress and busyness and thinking about the next day schedule can just... Keep yeah. you up at night, for sure. It can stretch it. According yeah. to Stats Canada, poor sleep quality is prevalent among Canadian adults. In fact, one out of every three adults is not sleeping enough for optimal physical and mental health. Wow. A lack of sleep can result in increased risk of new and advanced respiratory diseases, and it also can affect body weight. Ooh. But as we continue with our Protect Your Sleep, our week-long series focusing on the importance of a good night's rest, today we'll be looking at the important relationship between sleep and your diet. And diet. I hope that includes barbecue. <laughs> we also have a powerful story about a husband's refusal to give up on his wife as she clung to life. See how his prayers led to a miracle. But first, want to wake up feeling better than ever? Then take a look at this. Hmm. The signs are all around us. It's the man at the traffic light yawning. It's a woman in a meeting at work fighting to keep her eyes open. And maybe it's you. Over 60 million Americans suffer from a sleep disorder. What might surprise you is some of the answers to your sleep problems aren't just in the bedroom. They're in your kitchen too. You know, so if somebody is in generally cranky, if people have bags under their eyes, if people are have that rounded forward posture, those are all warning signs that, you know, externally that people aren't getting enough sleep. Dr. Josh Axe is on a mission. Every day through his website, draxe.com, and his YouTube channel, he's sharing all natural solutions to help people live healthier lives. He sees the high price people are paying because of their stress-filled lives, and Dr. Axe wants to change that. You know, if you think about it today, you know, we are in traffic jams, we are stress at work, stress in family. Well, a lot of us have these really high levels of cortisol due to all of these stressors we have today, and that's really a big part of why people aren't getting enough sleep. Our bodies aren't built for the pace of life that technology has brought us. It probably started when Thomas Edison introduced electric lights to streets and homes, and people have been losing sleep ever since. Today, people are overexposed to light by our always-on lifestyles. The result is our bodies aren't getting the restorative sleep that they need. People had candlelight, that's a natural orange light that your brain doesn't react to as well and you get sleepy. You know, our ancestors, they would go to bed, an hour or two after the sun went down and wake up at sunrise, so they got plenty of sleep. We're designed to work best when given enough time to rest and restore. So when you're sleeping and your body isn't having to process food and be using energy to think and all these other interactions within your body, it is the time where your body is best able to repair, recover, and actually heal itself. You can give yourself a head start to a good night's sleep. Surprisingly, it begins with overhauling your kitchen. Take some time to get rid of all the foods that are draining you of your sleep and replace them with foods that will charge up your life. 
big things we want to stay away from in terms of food, you want to stay away from sugar, refined grains, artificial sweeteners, hydrogenated oils, and any packaged processed foods. Not only will these foods rob you of sleep, they've also been linked to chronic illnesses like heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and cancer. So if it comes in a package and has a list of ingredients a mile long, stay away. Here are foods that you want to add to your shopping list. So number one, herbs. Number two, we need more vegetables. Number three, we need more fruit, specifically berries. Berries are contain antioxidants and certain types of carbohydrates that can create a healthy night's sleep. Number four, uh, nuts and seeds. Number five is going to be whole sprouted ancient grains like rice, oats, and quinoa. Start adding healthy fats to your shopping cart. These fats are another important part of staying healthy and getting a good night's sleep. So healthy fats can include avocados, coconut, wild caught salmon, nuts and seeds like walnuts, chia, and flax seeds. These healthy fat foods are great for regulating hormones in your body. Make sure you also add spices to your shopping cart. Cooking with spices is a simple way to stay healthy. Turmeric is fantastic. In fact, there are more clinical and medical studies on turmeric proving its overall health benefits for reducing inflammation and supporting the brain and the gut than any other herb out there today. So turmeric is very high on this list. And then ginger. You know, ginger is anti-inflammatory and really one of the ultimate herbs for supporting your digestive system. You might have heard that chicken soup is good for the soul. It's also great for your health. A study by the University of Nebraska Medical Center found that chicken broth helps boost your immune system. It also supports respiratory and digestive health, and that means more restorative sleep. Now, bone broth is really high in collagen, which we all know is great for your skin, hair, nails, your joints, your immune system, your gut and digestive health, but also the amino acids in bone broth are great for supporting your body's sleep cycles, partly because of how it supports your gut and your neurological health. Another food that is great for your gut and your brain is kale. It's been called a superfood and there are many reasons why. Here's one of them. It's loaded with magnesium. Magnesium helps fight insomnia by calming your nervous system. So go green and add kale to your diet. After that, Reward yourself with a piece of dark chocolate. It's high in magnesium too. Number one, if you can't change your whole diet, just change breakfast. Think about this. If you just change your breakfast, you're changing 33% of your diet. Wake up in the morning and do a superfood smoothie. You know, one scoop of a collagen protein or a bone broth uh, powder that's high in protein. And maybe a little bit of coconut milk and almond milk in there, cup of berries, a little bit of cinnamon. So do a superfood smoothie for breakfast. Limit the amount of coffee you drink during the day. If you don't, you are sabotaging your sleep. If you're having coffee after three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, you know, starting to get later in the day or especially at nighttime, even if you do fall asleep, that caffeine is keeping cortisol higher and it is affecting your sleep cycle. So coffee later in the day or lots of caffeine is a big no-no when it comes to getting quality sleep. If you want to sleep like a baby at night, then you need to move your body during the day. Exercise is an important part of your health and primes your body for sleep. If we don't move at all during the day and we're not working out at all, our body kind of says to itself, well, I didn't do much, I didn't do much today, so my sleep tonight isn't as crucial. So exercise, listen, whether you go in the gym and lifting weights or on the treadmill or you just go for a 20 minute walk outside, that's great as well. As your day comes to an end, be sure your bedroom is a sanctuary for sleep. Here's a list to help create the perfect sleep environment. Keep it clean and quiet. Get rid of all electronic devices. That includes a TV. Use a bed that is not too firm and not too soft. Set the temperature below 70 degrees and use an essential oil diffuser. You know, one of the number one things I recommend all my patients do to get a better night's sleep is start using essential oils. You know, essential oils are referenced more than 300 times in the Bible. My three favorite essential oils to get a better night's sleep are gonna be lavender, Roman chamomile, and holy basil. 
Don't lose another night of sleep. Start making changes to your diet today. Go for a walk outside with a friend. Remember, life is a gift from God. He wants you to experience a life that is abundant and full. You can with a perfect night's sleep. That is so true. You know, your diet does have a lot to do with your sleep quality. Absolutely. And what stood out to me, too, is our overexposure to light. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, we don't yep. get up with the sun and go down with the sun. You know, you're absolutely right. That's why you shouldn't be reading your email late at night. Well, I know. You're pointing. Don't yeah, point. Know? There's he. The but you know what? You're absolutely right. Yeah. I, I shouldn't be reading my emails at night. But one of the things that I find also is uh, when you look at the, uh, the different... Uh, natural things yeah. turmeric ginger yes. uh, ginger yeah. i don't know if, if if it has the same effect on you but it really uh, heats my blood up me it, too actually yeah. i haven't cooked a lot with it but yes. i'm learning i went to india and i'm learning to use some more of those spices yes and it's like wow there's a real charge you know when it you really make them. Is. and i really like that dark chocolate works for you too oh, that wow. made me very happy i know okay. there's more of you out there that appreciated <laughs> that you yeah, know? does that mean right before you go to bed you well eat? No, maybe okay. not a good time but it's it's good for you, I guess, you know. The one thing about, about uh, turmeric as well, it helps with joint pain. And mm -hmm. it's been touted for years. Uh, it has a whole lot of medicinal value, mm -hmm. and it does not only have vitamins and minerals. But, you know, one of the things that I also find is uh, with our sleep, if we can combine that with exercise as yes, well. Yes, agreed, Brian. You know, I feel so different when I am on a regular exercise routine. Yeah, and, and yeah. you're just getting some movement, right? Yeah, and eating natural foods and avoiding those processed foods. Yes. That is just, you know, shop the perimeter of the grocery store. Yes. Not the aisles. Yes, You ever no heard chips? that one? Well, it's hard to avoid the chip aisle, but I'll get working on that. <laughs> okay. You know, if, if you'd like more information and you also want to find out how you can help your help, health and protect your health and uh, protect your sleep, I'll, I'll work my tongue into a place. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by, and it's yours for the asking. It's absolutely free. And up next, with his wife beginning to die, Dawson pleads for a miracle. Mm. It's over. July 6, 2016 was an exciting day for Jackie and Gabriel Wilford. That afternoon, Jackie went into labor with their first child. Prayed my whole life, you know, I want a son, I want someone that I can raise up to be a servant for you, God. Jackie had been in labor 20 hours when they learned the baby developed an infection. With mother and child in danger, her doctor ordered an emergency C-section. I don't think it set in, the reality of a C-section and the complications. They could both die if they don't do this procedure. So when it really hit me is when I actually saw her on the table. That's when it actually, I'm like, okay, this is, this is something real. This is a serious thing. They started the surgery, but the pain blockers hadn't taken effect. It was the most painful thing I've ever went through. And so I, I did, I, I felt like I was dying. It was, it was horrible. I can feel every single thing. I could feel the, the doctor's hands press on my stomach and then the mo it was just really painful. <laughs> the doctor delivered a healthy baby boy, but by then, Jackie had gone into shock. I kept sh uncontrollably shaking and I could, I had to keep my hands to my like body because I felt like my body was just shutting down. I couldn't, I couldn't speak at one point. I knew it was serious, but I didn't want to let my mind start to, to think about it. And then, you know, if I'm panicking, well, then there's no way that I can be there for my kid or my wife. Gabriel texted family in the waiting area to pray for Jackie. I remember the doctor saying, okay, well, we're gonna put you to sleep right now. And then at that time I was like praying like, Lord, please, 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 like help me, help my son and make sure we come out healthy. The doctor stabilized Jackie and moved her to a recovery room. 
Gabriel thought the danger was past. It was, it was a sigh of relief. I was like, okay, Jackie's in the recovery room. She's holding the baby. She's a little woozy, but that's okay. It all went south when the doctor walked over to her and, you know, he pulled up her, the, the blankets that were on her. There was uh, so much blood that just came out. It just came pouring out. I was really scared. I was scared of what I saw. I saw in his eyes a little bit of fear, and I did. I became fearful. Jackie passed out, and the doctor called a code blue. Gabriel and baby Dawson were rushed from the room as the code blue team went to work. I just wanted somebody to come and grab me <laughs> and tell me it's going to be OK. I was preparing myself for the worst. I did not want to be a single dad. Jackie's so fun, and she's my best friend. So it'd be like losing, you know, a part of me and things like that. Alone in the hall, Gabriel cried out to God. I opened my heart to him, and I told him if he could, uh, if he could save Jackie, if he could hear this prayer of mine, he had spoke to me right away. Gabriel says God assured him that he was in control and that Jackie would be fine. I cried out to him, and he was right there. You know, before I even cried out to him, he was, he was right there, I just didn't see it. You know, God had taken my burden, taken those woes, and no matter what happened, I knew, hey, it's gonna be okay. You don't have to worry about anything at all. A few minutes later, they told Gabriel his wife had pulled through and was resting. He recalls the relief as he walked into her room. I just started joking around with her, how we, you know, I was like, you know, you almost died on me. I remember thinking all those things, you know, we could joke so much. Um, I said, she's my best friend. Over the next couple of days, Gabriel opened up in a Facebook post about his love for Jackie and the miraculous answer to prayer. I couldn't let her know how scared I was. I wanted to say I love you and tell her everything's gonna be okay. I watched helplessly as they tried to save my wife. I wanted to cry out to God and ask him why. God spoke to me. Gabriel, my son, I love you more than you can imagine. It's okay to call on me. I will always love you. Dawson was given a round of antibiotics to clear up his infection. A few days later, he and Jackie were released from the hospital. Both Jackie and Gabriel believe that prayer saved her life that day. I really believe that God heard our prayers, that maybe it was time for me to go. Maybe, maybe my time here on earth was done, like there was no more for me, and God heard someone's voice saying that. I have a purpose, like I have a reason to be here. God answered prayers because I, I do, I, I really thought I was dying. A lot of people, I don't, I don't think they, they understand the power of prayer. It's your one connection to God that he actually hears your voice, the, the uh, maker of the world, you know, they can actually hear you. Prayer is power, no matter in what circumstance, no matter how amazing your circumstances are, it is powerful, it's the most powerful tool we have. And when we finally recognize how powerful it is, we can move mountains. Baby Dawson, when you see that uh, God brought them through, you recognize what it means in Romans 8, 23, 28, excuse me, and it says, and we know, that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. You know, I've been in those situations before and it's not a, it's not a fun time. And it's, uh, it's really a very vulnerable moment. You might be in that situation right now. I, I love how Gabriel says, God assured him that he was there in control and that Jackie would be fine. I feel like that's for you today as well. That you need to know that it's going to be okay. God is gonna work it out. I want you to call the number on the screen. You might be in a hospital, you might be right now in legal problems, but uh, believe that God can work it out. I wanna give you a, a verse that says in Romans 8, in 16 it says, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and he helps us in our weakness. We don't know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit intercedes for us. And I believe that uh, that intercession, one standing before a greater on behalf of a lesser, is taking place. I want to give you the prayer fuel, some of the same verses that we are able to give to you. 
They're available to you at your fingertips. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are there for you. Request this. Answered prayer. But now let's, let's agree. Father, come on, stretch out your hands. Father, I thank you that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. And I know that this situation is serious, but now we join and blend faith together and we ask you that you would open a way that cannot be shut. Ah, there it is. You got it. And we thank you for shutting doors that no man could open. Father, it is so, and I receive it on their behalf now in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you, say, Pastor B, I received it. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are there for you. Well, coming up, Dr. Mary Lynn has some very encouraging words just for you. We just started with the usual symptoms of flu. Um, once your blood is half overtaken with a parasite, naturally speaking, there's no coming back from that. He has maybe two or three hours left to live. I'm just praying and pull myself together. And I remember in that moment just thinking, oh my goodness, God is doing something here. God's doing something. Miraculous Blessings, available now. I'm seeing an alarming trend of clients coming into my office, overworked, overtired, and just stressed out. They come in complaining of depression and anxiety symptoms. But when I assess what's going on for them in their lives, it sounds a lot like they're well on their way to burnout. Stress is becoming one of the number one killers in North America today. We all know that, I think. We've certainly all heard the warnings, and likely most of us know at least one person who died prematurely due to stress-related disease. Many of us are now living at an unsustainable pace, but we don't know how to stop. I have kids as young as six coming into my office suffering from stress symptoms. Families suffer, marriages break down, kids fail out of, all, out of school, all because of stress. It costs all of us. So what can you do? First of all, you must fix your sleep. If your body isn't getting the proper fuel, it's gonna break down. One of the most underrated links to health and behavioral problems is sleep. We sleep one third of our lives, but stats show that 74% of adults have insufficient sleep with very serious health and life consequences. Experts say that kids need 10 to 11 hours of sleep a night, while teens need at least nine hours of sleep. And adults need between seven and nine hours a night. Did you know that if you get six hours of sleep or less a night, you're actually significantly shortening your lifespan? Sleep is God's antidote for stress and healing. If it's the one thing you can do to go deal with your stress, just go and get better sleep. The second vital stress-busting strategy is nutrition. There's a growing body of research that suggests that our nutrition is inadequate, especially given our reliance today on convenience and packaged food. Studies are now showing the huge impact the fuel we take in has on the health of our bodies, including our mental health and our emotions and our ability to tolerate stress. And conversely, the more stress we're under, the greater the increase of stress hormones in our brain and the greater the likelihood we're gonna crave foods high in fat and sugar. Thirdly, be ruthless in creating a daily schedule that's sustainable for you and then stick to it. And do it backwards from the way you would normally do it. First, schedule in regular times of things that fill your tank. Rest and exercise, fun, relaxation, time with family and friends. Then fill in what's left in your schedule with your tasks. And if your schedule gets too busy, drop the tasks first, not your times of rest and self-care. Those should remain non-negotiable. Fourthly, surround yourself with people who fill your tank. Find people who will cheer you on, believe in you, help you laugh. People who are a positive influence in your life. Invest in these life-giving relationships and make them a priority. Connection is life. Don't get so busy that you let your relationships slide. Fifthly, learn to do nothing. When was the last time you did nothing? Our mind and bodies need regular downtime, time to do nothing but rest. Many people tell me they can't relax. Their bodies are so geared up towards adrenaline-driven activities, they can't shut their minds down and they end up feeling jittery and anxious if they're still. If this is you, I urge you, get some help before it's too late. Otherwise, you're heading down a road that's only gonna lead to big problems. And lastly, but most important of all, cultivate your spiritual life. 
You were created to be in close communion with your Father. Spend time with God resting in Him. Learn to find God everywhere, whether in the scriptures, in the hug from a friend, in the sunset, or in the smile from your child. I'm Dr. Mary. So true, stress and burnout. Thank you, Dr. Mary Lynn. Mm, great insights. And mm -hmm. then you know what? There is it's so real in our culture that we are all living under higher stress levels now than ever. Well, you're absolutely right. And uh, because of that, you know, when I, when I look at burnout, it's when our dreams literally mm -hmm. begin to wear out, where we, we just don't see any hope. That's uh, so coming true. That's and so uh, true. stress when our physical system, our adrenal system, and everything seems to be just pooping out on us. Absolutely, and you know one of the things that helps us with stress and burnout is being grateful. Yeah, like absolutely. focusing on the, and this is the week to be grateful. This is our it week is. to be thankful. And Brian, yes, I'm looking again at these incredible <laughs> recipes from you, and I'm just thinking about we've been talking about you know the comfort that we can have not just directly from our Heavenly Father, but you know, right from our stove, from the good food, from the bounty oh. of our Father's table. Sweet potato soup with bacon. Yep. Now that says comfort food to it, me. It, it does say. Speak to me about that. You know, you can do a little turkey bacon over here, but I can't tell you everything. You're just gonna have to call Man. the number, one 855 and you'll get this. We'll send it out to you for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I've got some recipes that I just put some special something something in it oh. just for you. There's a hidden ingredient here. I'm telling you oh, right yeah. now, you've got to get this. I <laughs> noticed that hidden ingredient. And you also need to get this, protect your sleep. If you haven't got your copy, it is really mm -hmm. very informative and it is valuable. one 855 700 Prayer partners are there for you and it doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is just request it and we'll get it out to you. Do you know, Brian, recently uh, in this week, there's been over 36 people that have called mm. our prayer lines asking prayer for sleep. Wow. That really stands out to me and I, it just shows that this is a really an epidemic in our culture. Let's so. agree with that. Father, I just feel burdened to pray for this and I pray against midnight stalkers and night ramblers that would come into the sleep of your people and I pray that you would give them sheets of satisfaction and pillows of peace and you would mm -hmm. cover them under your precious blood. Surround them with your angels. Now break that hold we ask in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, mm. Psalm 20 3, 4 says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Until next time, keep walking in comfort. Mm, have a good one. <laughs> to contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.